All right. Next up, we're going to hear about community data discovery with the Water Watch. is one of my favorite projects that I know about. Uh, Estuary Watch and the web portals. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'd just like to tell you about um, two programs that are um, ongoing in Victoria, and that's the uh, Water Watch and the Estuary Watch programs. They provide the training and support and equipment for volunteer monitors and groups and schools to do water quality testing. But it's more than that. It uh, encompasses a whole range of testing and observations at sites in uh, rivers, wetlands and estuaries. The, the aim of that is to get community members uh, to create data sets but beyond that, to raise their skills and knowledge and to uh, improve waterway management. And next page. So I just wanted to tell you today about those two programs and how volunteers have been involved in the development of the web portals. So there's a role for citizen science in waterway management. And I'm just going to give you a couple of examples here. Um, for instance, the uh, river scan program that you may have seen uh, yesterday, Cass Davis from North Central CMA presented it, uh, where there's a, um, a, a coordination between North Central Water Watch program and the Native Fish Recovery Plan. Um, and another example is on the Murray, where the Golden Broken Water Watch program observed water quality monitoring and uh, relate to large flood events, and that's um, uh, correlated with the environmental water program up there in the Murray-Darling Basin. Uh, in, another example is uh, the Upper Barwon Land Care Network has participated in the Water Watch program since, 90, uh, since 2005, monitoring 21 sites, including um, a creek that has got acid sulfate soils and has discharged highly acidic water into the Barwon catchment. And finally, I'll talk about estuaries. Um, for instance, uh, the Jelly Brand River estuary watches assist with the management of the, of the estuary um, by monitoring not only the phys chem processes uh, according to depth of estuary, but also making sure that um, a river height is well monitored because there's a lot of assets that can be flooded when estuaries become really full. So the Water Watch program, uh, since 2011 there's been a real emphasis on getting good quality data accessible to the public. And in 2015 there were two plans um, created, one for the Water Watch program and one for the Estuary Watch program. They both had these objectives, these strategic plans, um, to increase community participation in waterway engagement and monitoring activities to increase community knowledge and skills on how to do this monitoring, to make the data available, so that's why I've got in bold there, um, making con waterway condition data available to the community and also community awareness and knowledge of how rivers are managed, waterways are managed. So it's all about um, driving outputs to outcomes in this sort of strategy. Uh, the Victorian um, Waterway Management Strategy is the blueprint on how waterways are managed in Victoria and both these programs, Water Watch and Estuary Watch, are embedded in that strategy. And so we believe the, um, because we did an MER associated with the plan, we believe that the database that is developed uh, should assist with reporting. Uh, that it provides accessible information now and into the future, so the data is safe and accessible. And it's got to be easy to use, not clunky, and it's got to be kept up to date. So what we achieve is um, increasing availability of relevant data, and that encourages waterway stewardship. Okay, I just wanted to talk about 10 steps, 10 important steps. The programs did a survey of uh, the Water, Water Watch and Estuary Watch database to determine how the users expected that database to perform. 
All right, uh, some of those questions included <laughs> inverted fingers, as my friend James says. Um, it annoys me when, so that was one of the survey questions. Uh, one thing I like about data portal is ching ching, and if I had one wish, it would be to do this. So this is a sort of trying to get the expectations of people who are using databases for, for Water Watch and Estuary Watch. Um, the second thing was to have a formal agreement um, with the web portal developers. In this case, uh, it was with Federation Uni and CERDI, which is the Centre for E-Research and Innovative Design. Hang on. Design. Birgitta? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and so having that formal agreement was really useful. It put down what we expected each party to provide, uh, the budget, the timelines, um, and in addition to those, those key components like budget and timelines was, uh, was uh, the inclusion of uh, social impact research. Because uh, Federation Uni is a, um, a research institute, those sort of uh, factors were put into the proposal. Uh, thirdly, uh, the steering committees, they were so important to have volunteer monitors on those steering committees. They provided overview on the project as we went along. Uh, they put input into the website design, um, you know, direct feedback. No, we don't look like the look of that, or yes, we do. Um, the type of photos that could be put in, featured content. Um, the data portal structure, you know, what the forms look like, what makes it easy to enter data, do we put the water temperature in before the air temperature, before the pH readings, for instance? Um, data portal structure, yep. And uh, testing, some beta testing. It's very important that uh, before it gets put onto the uh, online community uh, that it's been tested out by the people who know how, what to look for. And so the volunteers were involved with that. And quality assurance. There was a, um, a really important feature that was put into the uh, portals, and that is um, getting immediate feedback on what the normal results would be expected for that um, parameter. For instance, um, what would the normal pH be in that, in that river or waterway according to the statistics that had already been collected? And so people were able to get immediate feedback. It was quality assurance on, on, uh, on that data. And that went down really well. So that's three, four. I mentioned the social impact survey of users. Um, and it measures uh, people's um, behavior and attitude over time. Um, the social impact was done in, is going to be done in four waves. One wave has been done already, and Pat Bonney uh, is a PhD student who is um, studying social research and is involved in looking into the Water Watch program. I should mention that the PhD scholarship was part of the proposal, so how's that for value for money? You know, it's excellent. Pat, are you here? Yep, so up the back, if anyone wants to know about social research, talk to Pat. He'd love to talk to you. <laughs> um, and the, one of the next steps was progress report, really important so that we knew where we were tracking. An engagement plan, stakeholder analysis, knowing who our users are, how we want to get a message to them, uh, what sort of collaboration do we want with those people? So looking at the IAP2 engagement spectrum. So uh, doing this plan was really important. It's, uh, we haven't implemented all the plan yet. We're still working on it. But for instance, uh, creating something like a postcard, double-sided, one side S3 watch, one side water watch, with key messages on it, how people can get to the database and get what they want from that database. I've got some copies of the postcard on the table down there. And we have um, 
The next step, number seven, volunteer and coordinated training. So uh, when the uh, portals were ready, we had to uh, do some coordinated training. So across Victoria, there are different coordinators in different parts of the, the uh, regions. And they all needed to know how to use this portal before they could then pass that information on to the, uh, the, the, the large community of volunteer monitors. There was a launch event, so we're up there with um, the Parliamentary Secretary for the Environment. So that was a great celebration. That was the end of last year. Um, number nine, making sure that we've got a good hosting and support service uh, so that people know that the, if there's an issue, if an, a volunteer is experiencing an issue, they then uh, go to the it's brought to the attention of their local coordinator. If that local coordinator can't solve that problem, it goes to myself or my colleague Rose Herbin for the Estuary Watch program. If we can't solve it, it then goes to the help desk. And of course, there's continuous improvement. Uh, this, this, these portals were launched a year ago, but we know that it's really important to continuously improve and tweak it, um, make changes where necessary. Um, so that improvement through feedback is so important. And we found that working with uh, Federation Uni allows that to happen quite easily. Um, it, it's, a, it's a good fit. Just say, uh, talk about some favourite web portal features. So I've got a few slides on these. Uh, for instance, there's a, um, the mapping portal. Uh, you can look at um, selecting a site. Let's see. Is this a pointer? Oh, <coughs> good. So you would click on a site, for instance, clicking on the, the Moorable at the confluence between the east and west branch. And once you're in that site, you can see just how long it's been monitored for, information about the reaches, uh, how many visits there are. And then just by clicking the hyperlink, you can then go to what we've got uh, more information. So we've got several headings up the top there, the overview, the map, who's been, who's been monitoring there, including things like this chart. I love this chart because it's showing something really important happening for electrical conductivity. All right, I wanna hear from the... Uh, Audience, does anyone recognise what that change might be due to? Yeah, rain. Drought broke. So the, the drought in um, uh, that impacted all our catchments, caused uh, salinity to go up, and then suddenly we got some good rain, and it came back. But we, we can see pulses that are seasonal. Um, th these are due to climatic change or even uh, environmental water releases. I just love that one. All right, next one. Um, there is an interactive map also that uh, you can access. For instance, if you look at a particular site, you'd be able to um, click on different layers. That's the estuary watch sites, uh, the water watch sites, the Wimmer's sites, that's what the uh, government our water quality information is stored. So you can click on the Wimmer's site and it'll take you to the Wimmer's um, web, uh, where they store, website where they store the um, info. And even things like um, fish, fish sightings at that, that particular place. Uh, the, for Estuary Watch, who loves estuaries? You're gonna get so excited about this one. <laughs> You really are. Um, people do photo point monitoring and they can join up their photos. Looks fantastic. Look at that wonderful estuary. And also, um, with uh, Estuary Watch, they do um, monitoring at different depths. So this is showing the, um, the bed of the estuary. And we've got our fresh water and our um, brackish water there. So it's showing from zero to... Uh, 10 kilometres away, what it's looking like. All right, I'm 
Google Analytics really important, but just finishing up, I just acknowledge the contribution from Rose Herbin, she's the Estuary Watch coordinator, Birgitta Hansen from CERTI, um, Trent Wallace, who used to be at the CMA, from VIEW, and Victorian Government. Thank you. Thank you very much.